Good morning. Good morning. Welcome. Welcome to us. We'll finish up that uh, uh, in our number study. We'll finish up chapter thirty-three today. This uh, this uh, kind of like a log, almost almost like a ship's log of uh, all the places they stopped along the way. We've been going through this uh, since yesterday. We started on this yesterday, and uh, we'll finish up today. Seems like a long chapter, but it's really uh, just a route as they took going to uh, going from Egypt and their route all the way through to uh, where they are now, uh, which is up near uh, Jericho, getting ready to cross over the border into Jericho. So Moses is kind of here. He knows his time is coming short, so he's kind of maybe just finishing up uh, all the details so that they'll be recorded for history and and. Now we have them because of what he did. So we left off at chapter verse 15 yesterday, and we'll pick up at verse 16. So continuing on in their journey, uh, let's bring up some verses. So let's pray first. Dear Heavenly Father, oh Lord, oh Lord, thank you, Lord, so much for uh, all this great information. And uh, I'm sure uh, it was uh, it was so it was so so good to kind of uh, put. Oh, I know that uh, when any of us makes a travel, Lord, that uh, we uh, we we like to we like to see the route we took and uh, and remind and and you can see that uh, here we have a great memory of the route of the uh, chosen folks that you uh, brought out of the out of Egypt and and the path they took going all the way to the Promised Land. Thank you, Lord, and help us, Lord, just, uh, to to uh, glean something from the, from your Word that's going to be helpful. And that uh, thank you, Lord, for helping me to to pair this lesson. In Jesus' precious name I pray. Amen. I was just thinking as I was praying that uh, you know, whenever we, whenever we plan a trip, uh, you know, we always get out the maps and uh, nowadays you just uh, punch in a number in your GPS and it takes you right there. You know, uh, you follow directions. Well, this is kind of like uh, God, God provided his GPS for this travel. Remember the uh, he had the pillar of smoke during the day and the uh, pillar of fire at night to guide their way. Uh, so God was the GPS in this scenario. And he had Moses records all the places they stopped. I realized 90% <coughs> of these places I'm going to read it today, we don't even know where they are. Uh, You'll notice that uh, I'm going to go through a bunch of them, uh, probably uh, over 11 verses that won't have any correlation to any verses in uh, the original Exodus. So here, Moses is recording some uh, their travels and where they stopped. There isn't a lot of detail of what happened at each place. I tried to fill in a little bit here and there, but I don't want to make this chapter too long. If you want to uh, restudy uh, Exodus, uh, that would be a great place uh, if you're interested in studying this. We did go through this whole area, uh, and what happened in each area, uh, in, in uh, both Exodus and Leviticus. So here we're just kind of doing a summary. So let's pick up at verse 16. So they've been at the desert of Sinai, which is right here. And... Uh, right here. Uh, it's actually the current name is called Jabal al Uh I believe that uh, this is this is the true Mount Sinai. The traditional site is down here. Uh, and this path, this is a map that Chuck Missler had. Uh, this path that had some interesting, we talked about it uh, yesterday, of uh, this could have been the possibility of the path they took. It actually uh, looks more achievable than uh, the, the path across over up here. But I can see either path uh, for different reasons. And so we're picking up here at Mount Sinai, so we're going to be heading off. The reason I like this map is that Chuck did a much better job of drawing how they had to go around Edom. If you remember, we had a, in a number study. They tried, they wanted to cross Edom along the King's Highway here, you see. Uh, but Edom was uh, said no. And they actually were going to come out and fight them. And so the, uh, they ended up going all the way around Edom to get back around and head north. 
the other thing that's going to happen during today is that uh, Aaron is going to uh, is going to uh, is going to die and go to heaven, and uh, so that's going to be a and, a and and God actually gives us a date for that, uh, so that uh, it really is a is a good indicator of where we are in history. So let's continue. And they removed from the desert of Sinai and pitched at Gibroth Hatteva. That's a name and a half. That name actually stands for the graves of the lust. Or you might say, what lust? Uh, what was there? Some big, uh, big uh, sexual uh, sin that happened here. Not really a sexual one, but one of uh, one of uh, greed and wanting, and didn't really wanted something different than what the Lord was providing. So let's look at that. It's actually in Numbers eleven thirty three and thirty four where this happened. And it was uh, to, to lead up to this. Remember, the people were complaining about the manna and the fact that God, they were tired of the manna, they wanted some meat. So, uh, so they were complaining so heavily about it that uh, God uh, sent it to them. But they sent them, but He sent it to them out of uh, out of strife. And this is uh, so picking up in that uh, area where the Lord sent the uh, the uh, the flesh to them, to Numbers eleven thirty three and thirty four. And while the flesh was yet between their teeth, ere it was chewed. The wrath of the Lord was kindled against the people, and the Lord smote the people with a very great plague. And he called the name the place of uh, that big long name, because they, because uh, there they buried the people that lust. So that name means uh, the land of the uh, uh, the graves of the lust. So continuing on. And they departed from there and encamped at Hezeroth. In Hezeroth, we see that on uh, we see we see that also in Numbers eleven thirty five. And the people journeyed from there and unto Hezeroth and abode at Hezeroth. Okay, so pick it back up at verse eighteen. And from verse eighteen to twenty nine. By the way, this particular area uh, that we're talking about is somewhere along here. They haven't made it to Kadesh yet. So these areas we're going to be talking about now are, are between here and Kadesh. It's not in verse 18. And none of these were in the original uh, in, in original uh, in Exodus. So that uh, I'll just read through them. And they departed from Hezeroth and pitched in Rithma. And they departed from Rithma and pitched at Rimaparez. And they piled from River Paris and pitched in Libana. And they removed from Libana and pitched at Rissa. And they journeyed from Rissa and pitched in Kihaletha. And they went from Kihaletha and pitched in Mount Shafer. And they removed from Mount Shafer and encamped at uh, Herada. And they removed from Herada and pitched in Mechiloth. And they removed from Mechiath and encamped at Telath, Tahath. And they departed from Tahath and pitched at Terah. That name should sound a little familiar. Terah, uh, I guess realized that it was there, was the name of, uh, I know I've heard that name before. I want to say associated with uh, maybe uh, uh, Moses' uh, father for some reason. Terah sounds familiar. I don't know if I can see it real quick. See if there's anything that mentions in my uh, commentary. Numbers 33:27. It's 33:27. It means de delay. And it's the only place it's mentioned. Okay, so it's, this is the only place it's mentioned. Thought it sounded like something else, but okay. And, and pitched at Tara. And they removed from Tara and pitched at Mithka. And we went from Mithka and pitched at Hashemoth. 
Now, Hashemoth, we pick back up. And, Hash, and they parted from Hashemoth and encamped at Mazaroth. They departed from Mazaroth and pitched in Ben Jacan. And they, and they removed from Bexican and encamped at Horgagad. And they went from Horgadad and pitched in Jot Behefa. Now this, now, this section actually gets mentioned uh, in Deuteronomy 10, 6 and 7. And the children of Israel took their journey from breath of the children of Jechad to Moserah. Then there Aaron died, and there, there he was buried, and Eleazar, his son, ministered in the priest's office in his stead. From thence they journeyed from uh, Gigoda, from Gigoda to Jobath, and a, la a land of rivers of waters. Let me get my map back up here. And the mountain in Ma that, uh, that they went up on, that uh, Aaron died on, was actually Mount Hor, and we'll, we'll see that here in a second, I believe. And they removed from Jabarath and encamped at Evernoth. They departed from Evernoth and camped at uh, Ezig Jabur. And they removed from e e Ezon Jabur and pitched in the wilderness of Zin, which is Kadesh. Okay, so now they're in Kadesh. This is also mentioned in Numbers 20, verse 1. Then came the children of Israel, even the whole congregation, into the desert of Zin in the first month, and the people abode in Kadesh, and Miriam died there. Oh, that's right, Miriam died here and was buried there. That was the, uh, that's when Moses, I uh, remember, uh, bought that piece of land uh, that ends up becoming, uh, 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 well, I forget the name of it, Hebron. Uh, yeah, it's on this map. I'm sorry, this is Miriam. I'm, I'm thinking of uh, uh, Sarah. Miriam was actually uh, uh, was Moses' second wife. So she was actually buried here. Uh, I get what I just said about the uh, Hebron. Hebron has to do with his first wife. Uh, I'm not even his first wife because uh, this is Moses. I'm thinking of uh, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Okay, back to what we were thinking. We're on to verse 37. And they removed from Kadesh and pitched at Mount Hor in the edge of the land of Edom. So there's Mount Hor there. And this is where Aaron is going to die too. And Aaron the priest went up into Mount Hor at the commandment of the Lord and died there in the 40th year after the children of Israel were come out of the land of Egypt in the first day of the first, fifth month. So it's been 40 years now, almost to the day, uh, since they left Egypt. That's why they were actually wandering for 38 years. Remember, they spent uh, uh, they spent uh, pretty close to a, a year between uh, traveling to Mount Sinai and at Mount Sinai. So the actual the actual wandering in the desert was actually only 38 years, not 40. But the total journey was 40 years before they got to this point. And they're still not in the Providence land yet. Verse 39, and Aaron was 123 years old when he died at Mount Hor. So we got a great uh, time factor here also. This is also mentioned in verse 20, verse 1. Then, the, then, then came the children of Israel, even the whole congregation, to the desert of Zen, the first month, and the people of Bode and Kadesh, and Miriam died there and was buried there. I think I already mentioned that once. Yes, I did. He jumped into verse 22. And the children of Israel, even the whole congregation, journeyed from Kadesh and came unto Mount Hor. We saw that already. And they jump into Numbers 27, 14. For he, ye rebelled against my commandment in the desert of Zin in the strife of the congregation to sanctify me at the water before their eyes. 
that is the water of Meribah and Kadesh and the wilderness of Zin. The other thing that's going to happen here is those spies are going to go in. We'll see that here in a second. I think I actually got to bring up those verses. And notice God reminds Moses how he disobeyed and struck the rock. I think that was in verse 30. Uh, It's actually in verse 40. And the king Arad, the Canaanite, which dwelt in the south in the land of Canaan, heard of the coming of the children of Israel. Yeah, that. that. What I meant about Moses' rebellion is right here in verse uh, in Numbers 27, 14. But yet he rebelled against my commandment in the desert of Zin, in the strife of the congregation, to sanctify me at the water before their eyes. This is the water of Meribeth and Kadesh in the wilderness of Zin. This is where he's, uh, he actually struck the rock, and he was actually told by God to, to speak to the rock. So here was the pattern broken as a picture of Christ. And I kind of think that they, the, the picture of Christ we're talking about here, the first strike uh, was the nation during the tribulation period. And then maybe the speaking to was them to, uh, about the millennium kingdom. I'm just guessing uh, that that could be two reasons for the di difference between them. I don't know for sure. And also going back to verse 38 again. And Aaron the priest went up to Mount Hur at the commandment of the Lord and died there. The day of Aaron's death is important for dating events, beginning with the first Passover. The record covers the 40 years and ends with a picture of Israel's hosts stretched out alongside the Jordan between two places several miles apart, Beth Jezimoth and Abel Shittim, modern-day uh, Tel Kephron. That would be up here somewhere. Heshebon. And Abel Shipman. Well, Shipman is right there. Modern day Tel Kephren. <clears throat> Remember the Bale of Peor? Oh, that's where that is. That's where they're. So they've been in this general area. Uh, encamped. So either way, it uh, it provides a good uh, a good reference point for the uh, what for what age we're in. Okay, back to verse uh, forty. And speaking of verse forty, we also see that in Numbers twenty one one through three. And when King Arad the Canaanite, which dwelt in the south, heard tell that Israel came by the way of the spies, then he fought against Israel and took some of them prisoner. <clears throat> and Israel bowed a vow unto the Lord and said, if, if thou will indeed deliver this people into my hand, then I will utterly destroy their cities. And the Lord hearkened to the voice of Israel and delivered up the Canaanites, and they utterly destroyed them in their cities, and he called the name of the place, Hobah. Okay, on to verse 41. And they departed from Mount Hor and pitched in Zalmonai. Zalmonai. Now we're on the other side of the, uh, of the, uh, uh, almost like the, the river region. I'm not sure there's a river actually down here. This is below the Dead Sea. I could envision a river running between the Dead Sea and the Gulf of Aqaba even. Okay. And we see this in Numbers 21, verse 4. And they journeyed from Mount Hor by the way of the Red Sea to compass the land of Edom. And the soul of the people was much discouraged because of the way. So this is where they found out they're not going to be allowed to go through the King's Highway, which you can see would be a, a short jump. But they end up having to go all the way around. That's what God told them to do. But just when you think that uh, uh, things are going smooth, you never know when God might have to redirect your route uh, to something you may not be expecting. Okay, continuing on in verse 42. And they departed from Zemmonoth and pitched in Punan. 
to whom gave very far journey. And they, and they departed from Punyon and pictured Oboth. And Oboth, we also see this in uh, verse uh, Numbers 21.10. And the children of Israel set forward and pictured Oboth. Verse 44, and they departed from Oboth and pitched in Jeroboam in the border of Moab. That must be, uh, now they've gone all the way around Edom in those two verses. And uh, and now they're sitting up uh, on the edge of Moab. It could be along this area here somewhere. We also see this in Numbers 21.11. And they journeyed from Oboth and pitched at Jeabarim in the wilderness, which is before Moab, toward the rising. That looks like it's uh, right there. And again, back to verse 45. We're going to have some more cities that aren't mentioned in Exodus. They departed from uh, Lim and pitched in uh, Diabag, Diagab. And they moved from Diagab and kept it in uh, Almond, Debeth, uh, and they moved from there and pitched in the mountains of Abram before Nebo. And of course, remember Nebo. Nebo is up here. And they departed from the mountains of Abram and pitched in the plains of Moab by the Jordan near Jericho. They can see we're at verse 48 now. We still got some more verses to go. So uh, they're going to wander around in this area a little bit. Because we still haven't gone up and taken the land up, uh, of uh, uh, Bashan. And they pitched by Jordan from uh, Beth Jezmoth, even unto Abel shit them in the plains of Moab. <clears throat> Remember, this is where the whole thing with Balaam happened and Balak. And the Lord spoke unto Moses in the plains of Moab by Jordan near Jericho, <clears throat> saying, Speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them, When you are passed over Jordan into the land of Canaan. <clears throat> So what do they mean by this thing? And uh, when you passed over, so let's look at Deuteronomy 7, 1 and 2. <clears throat> when the Lord thy God shall bring thee into the land where thou goest to possess it, and have cast out many nations before thee, the Hittites, the Gergesites, the Amorites, the Canaanites, and the Pesites, and the Hivites, and the Jebusites, seven nations greater and mightier than thou. And when the Lord thy God shall deliver them before thee, thou shalt smite them, and only destroy them, and they should make no covenant with them, nor show mercy upon them. But God doesn't want you showing any favoritism to this group. And also in Joshua 3.17. All right, I'm Deuteronomy 9, 1 first. Hear, O Israel, thou art to pass over Jordan this day, to go in to possess nations greater and mightier than thyself. Cities great and fenced up to heaven. Now Joshua 3.17. And the priests that bear the Ark of the Covenant stood trim on ground, dry ground in the midst of the Jordan, and all the Israelites passed over on dry ground until all the people were passed over, over who passed clean over Jordan. Okay, so... Continuing on, I'm going to read through, I'm going to read through a, a short section. God has some commandments that they have to follow. And so now we're, in, we're up at, at the end of our journey here. And then you shall drive out all of the inhabitants of the land from before you and destroy all their pictures, destroy all their molten image, and quite pluck down all their high places. So he wants them to completely not even be able to tell they ever existed. 
Well, we know that didn't happen because they, uh, human nature, they let some people slide. Verse 53. <clears throat> and you shall dispose the inhabitants of the land and dwell therein, for I am giving you the land to possess it. And you should divide the land by lot for an inheritance among your families. And to the more ye shall give the more inheritance, and to the fewer ye shall give the less inheritance. Every man's inheritance should be in the place where his lot falleth. According to the tribes of, the, of your fathers ye shall inherit. So, moving on to verse 55. But if you will not drive out the inhabitants of the land before you, then I, it shall come to pass that those who shall, that you let remain of them shall be pricks in your eyes and thorns in your sides. and shall vex you, you in the land which, uh, wherein uh, you dwell. Moreover, it shall come to pass that I shall do unto you as I, I thought to do unto them. So this is a, when they disobey what he what wants. So the land is given to Israel as a promise in the Abrahamic covered covenant. And remember back in Genesis 15, 18 through 21, this is the original covenant that uh, that Jesus, uh, that uh, I believe it was Jesus, actually gave to the Israelites. I'll just read through that briefly. Genesis 15, 18 through 21. On the same day, the Lord made a covenant with Abram, saying, Unto thy seed have I given this land, from the river of Egypt, unto the great river, the river Euphrates. The Canaanites and the Kizites and the uh, Kedamites, and the Hittites and the Pizites and the Rephaims, the Amorites and the Canaanites, and the Gergesites and the, and the Jebusites. Also, the, the way it was to be distributed, uh, so the way the land was to be distributed, so we'll just shift gears a little bit. Let me get a different map. Let me read through this first. It's in uh, Numbers 26, 52 through 56. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Unto, the, uh, unto these lands shall be divided for inheritance according to the number of thy names. To many that shall give the more inheritance, and to, and to few that shall give the less inheritance. To each one shall his inheritance be given according to those that were numbered of him. Notwithstanding, the land shall be divided by lot according to the names of the tribes of the fathers that they shall inherit. According to the law, shall the, the possession of the land be, uh, be divided between many and few. So that basically, based on your population, is how you're going to get your land. But it's also by lot, so they're picking. So it also could mean that uh, you might get some more land depending on where your lot fell. That's what I take out of that. Let me get that other map, uh, kind of show the, the division a little bit better than we got here. There it is. And we'll get into this in depthly when we get into jo Joshua. Uh, but you can see the division of the land. This map I liked it because it had a lot of different towns on there. I'll let you look at that while we finish off this chapter. So the command to drive out the nation, destroy their idols and their high places. We actually see this in Exodus 23. 23 through 33. For mine angel shall go before thee and bring thee into, unto the Amorites, unto the Hittites, the Pesites, and the Canaanites, Hivites, and the Jebusites, and I will cut them off. Thou shalt not bow down to their gods, nor serve them, nor do any, anything after their works, but thou shalt utterly overflow them and quite break down their images. And ye shall serve the Lord your God, and ye shall bless the, breed, the bread and the water, and I will take sickness away from the midst of thee. 
There shall nothing cast their young nor be barren in the land the number of the days I will fill. I will send my fear before, before thee and will destroy all of the people to whom thou shalt come. I will make all thine enemies turn their backs unto thee. I will send hornets before thee, which shall drive out the Hivite and the Canaanite and the Hittite from before they are, from before thee. I will not drive them out from before thee in one year, lest the land become desolate and the beasts of the field multiply against thee. That's a great example of uh, God's timing is always perfect. Uh, he's, going to, he's only going to allow the land to be taken as long as it can be supported and taken care of. Uh, by the people in this. By little and little, I will drive them out before thee until thou be increased and then inherit the land. So as their population grows, they'll get more land. Now I will set the bounds for the Red Sea, even unto the Sea of Palestine, and from the desert unto the river. For I will deliver the inhabitants of the land into your hand, and I shall drive them out before men for thee. Thou shalt make no covenant with them, nor with their gods. Thou shalt not dwell in their land, <clears throat> lest they make thee sin against me. For if thou serve their gods, it will surely be a snare unto thee. Preserve thou that which I command thee this day. Behold, I drive out before thee the Amorite, the Canaanite, the Hittite, the Pesachite, the Hivite, and they give you sight. <laughs> Take heed to yourself, lest thou make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land, whether thou goest, lest it be for a snare in the midst of thee. But you shall destroy their altars, break down their images, and cut down their groves. For thou shalt worship no other god, for the Lord whose name is Jealous is a jealous God. Least thou make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land, and they go a whoring after gods, and do sacrifice unto them, under their gods, and one call thee, and thou sacrifice, and thou eat of his sacrifice. So was, don't eat uh, uh, to sacrifices made the, uh, to idols uh, during this time frame. That was a big thing. Even Daniel uh, spoke against that. Okay, so we're almost done. Thou shalt make thee no molten gods. Also, also mentioned in Leviticus 20, verses 1 through 26. I'm not going to read the whole thing, just a, a short portion, portion of it. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Again thou shalt say to the children of Israel, Whosoever be of the children of Israel, or of the strangers that sojourn in Israel, thou uh, giveth any of his seed unto Molech, he shall surely be put to death. The people of the land shall stone him with stones. And I will set my face against that man, and will cut him off from among his people, because he hath gone of his seed unto Molech, to defile my sanctuary, to profane my holy name. And the people, and if the people of the land do any ways hide their eyes from the from the man, when he giveth of his seed unto Molech, and kill him not. Then I will set my face against that man, against his family. I will cut him off, and all that go a whoring after him. To commit uh, whoredom with Molech from, the, from among their people. Jump into verse 22. Ye, sh ye shall therefore keep all my statutes and all my judgments and do them. But the land will I bring you to dwell therein, spew you not out. And ye shall not walk in the, ma the manners of the nation which I cast out before you. For they counted all these things, and therefore I abhor you. I abhor them. But I have said unto you, you shall inherit their land, and I will go in unto you to possess it, a land that floweth with milk and honey. I am the Lord your God, which have separated you from other people. You should therefore be difference between clean beasts and unclean, and between unclean fowls and clean ones. I shall not make your souls abominable by, by a beast, or by a fowl, or by any manner of living that thou creepest on the ground, which I have separated you as unclean. And ye shall be holy unto me, for I, the Lord, am holy, and, and have served you from other people, and you should be mine. When the Lord thy God shall bring thee into the land, where thou goest to possess it, 
and hath cast out many heroes before thee, the Hittites, the Gibbethites, the Amorites, the Canaanites, the Pisgahites, the Hivites, and the Gibbethites, seven nations, greater and mightier than thou. And when the Lord thy God shall deliver thee, deliver them before thee, thou shalt smite them and utterly destroy them, that thou shalt make no covenant with them, or show mercy unto them. Now we're in the Deuteronomy section, I just realized. Neither shalt thou make marriages with them, thy daughter that sh thou shalt not give unto his son, nor his daughter shalt thou give unto thy son. No, inter no interracial marriages. For they will turn away the son from following me, and, and they may ser uh, serve other gods. So the anger, anger of the Lord has be kindled against you, and destroy thee seriously. But this shall you deal with them. You shall destroy their altars and break down their images and cut down their groves and burn the graven images with fire. Okay, so to finish off this section, two more verses, Deuteronomy 12, 29 and 30. When the Lord thy God shall cut off the nations from before thee, whether thou goest to possess them, and thou succeedest them and dwellest in their land, take heed to yourself that thou be not snared by, the, by following them, after they, they be destroyed from before thee, and that thou inquire not after their gods, saying, How do these nations serve their gods? Even so will I do likewise. So that was, uh, that's one area too that uh, that God is going to be the one that makes sure that uh, make sure that you eliminate these particular groups. And again, I think this goes back to uh, the fact that uh, there is something wrong, there is something uh, corrupt, not only just to the people themselves in a morality kind of a way, so they definitely are, but that their seed, their uh, the seed that they uh, come from is that seed that goes all the way back to Genesis 6.15, and what I like to call the seed war. So that's why God is eliminating all these countries and all these people groups, including women and children, which is unusual for, for a combat force to go after women and children also. So let's pray. Oh, dear Heavenly Father, thank you. Thank you, Lord, for helping me with this lesson. And thank you, Lord, for uh, helping me with uh, my future studies as we uh, go into our next study starting tomorrow. We give you praise and thanks and all you do. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So I'll see you again tomorrow. And we start an exciting study in Matthew 13. And it's going to bring in a few other parts of the Bible that uh, I think you'll find very, very interesting. So have a great day.